Hi, uh, Ryan Cole here with the Payments.com team. I'm sitting with John Brugman, CEO of TraxPay. We're in New York City at Payments.com's uh, business to business payments event. Uh, we just got out of an awesome keynote uh, speech with Nuriel Rabini. Uh, he talked about sort of global uh, trends, regulations, the impact on our economies. John, let's start by giving a, a quick synopsis of TraxPay, where you guys are coming from, what you specialize in, and then we'll hop into some of the issues that came up uh, in our keynote today. So TraxPay is a dynamic B2B payments company. What that is, is in contrast to every other company that is a static payments company, is that we can change the who, what, where, when, why, how of a payment at any time from the moment a payment instruction is created and initiated to the moment that it's fully settled and reconciled. And as far as I could tell, we're the only company in the world that can change any or all of those dimensions of a payment at any time during its life. Awesome. Uh, I know in a, in a previous conversation, you and I talked about the marriage of data and payments. Uh, it sounds like that's what you're, what you're going after. Well, in order to determine which of those variables to change and, and why change them, it's because it's driven by data that creates a rule and that rule tells you what to do with the payment. So we may change who the payment goes to based on a change in the terms of a contract. We may change the amount based on the time the payment's made. We may change the route of the payment based on cost sure. across the route. So yes, we use data and rules to determine when and how to change the who, what, where, when, why, how of a payment. Very cool. Um, let's talk a little about, about, about the, uh, the keynote that we just got out of. We had some awesome contrasting opinions. That's what one of the things we love here at payments.com. Uh, people with different ideas and viewpoints. We got a number of you up uh, having a conversation. Uh, Lisa Shields from HyperWallet had an interesting uh, sort of opinion about how she saw regulation as driving a gulf between the capabilities that perhaps we see in B2C payments or the APIs that are out there. And uh, so that is a, as a gulf between what could potentially be realized in B2B payments, in real-time payments between businesses. Uh, you had some different reactions, and I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about them. Well, I, I love the way Lisa described the regulatory challenge and how it's holding B2B payments from achieving the same level of ease of, of use and ease of access as B2C has attained. But I think it's oversimplified to say, once we solve regulatory, we're all done. Mm -hmm. I think there are really three issues, regulatory being one of them, that as you go from jurisdiction to jurisdiction or government to government, they all have different rules. They all have different ways they view the flow of a payment, and you have to deal with that. But there's also technology challenges. In B2B, data matters. And data lives in the back office information systems. It's in ERP, it's in uh, purchase to pay systems, order to cash systems, electronic invoicing systems. There's all kinds of data that's required a deep understanding, access to both the, the ability to read it and write it. And if you don't solve the data issue and the regulatory issue, you're not done. And then third and final uh, issue is the business model. The, the business models in B2C are really straightforward. They're, they're uh, well known and well understood by the consumer. But B2B, as you go from one supply chain to another supply chain, they have very different rules and very different business models on how they have built themselves up and, and how they interact. And if you don't have the flexibility, if you don't have an, an ability to deliver to different business models, that's also an obstacle. So I think it's the combination of technology, regulatory, and business models. All three are problems we, we're going to have to address before we get widespread adoption. I'm glad you brought up business models because it was certainly something that came up at sort of the, the end of the conversation about, uh, about how important those were going to be. One of the things that you uh, mentioned in sort of in tandem was 
uh, re-engineering the supply chain. Uh, it was one of, one of the earlier uh, parts of the discussion that came up. Why don't you talk to me a little bit about what re-engineering the supply chain is going to look like? You mentioned that we were sort of on the precipice of a lot of innovation within the B2B space. And I'm curious if you could just elaborate on, on, on some of these coming trends. You bet. So uh, technology and innovation has always been applied to the top end of the supply chain. The tier one may be stretching down to the tier two suppliers. So, so the big buyer has, has put a lot of technology in place, EDI technologies, uh, the, the different technologies I just mentioned uh, previous. The banks have focused their attention on the top end of the supply chain and the tail of the supply chain has been largely dismissed and overlooked. And the reason is the cost to deploy technology, um, the ability of those companies to accept technology, it, it's not been readily available. And the innovation I'm talking about is to take the same kinds of capabilities and the same kinds of advantages that the top end of the supply chain gets and pushing it deeper into the supply chain. So the biggest challenge in any supply chain is working capital and the access to capital at a good price, at a fast and easy and ubiquitous access. And that's been really, really hard because the supply chain data has been separate from the payment data. Sure. And if we bring those two together, I have real time access to payments. I have real time access to data and it's together. And now we're going to see all kinds of new compensation models or financial products that are offered to the supply chain to give the back end of the supply chain the same benefits and advantages as the front end. And I think what you're going to see is buyers push more of their business deeper in the supply chain because of uh, quality of, of product or delivery, because of terms and conditions that they get. Or so, so you're going to see a democratization of the supply chain, and that's going to be to the benefit of everybody because the top end of the supply chain better perform or they'll be disintermediated. The back end of the supply chain are going to get advantages they never had, and the buyer is the ultimate winner. And that's what I mean when I talk about the, the, the reorganization of the supply chain. I mean, very cool. Uh, John, thanks so much for sharing your views. Uh, as always, we love you know, the contrasting opinions, the innovators like Traxpeg. And uh, it, was, it was awesome to hear you here at the event. And thanks for taking the time. Yeah, right. Uh, it's always right pleasure. now. Yeah, you got it.